Hi, Time Lord here, looking at how to edit footage with a smartphone, first of all, motion array. It's where there are lots of templates, templates for all of these, Final Cut Pro, Adobe Premiere, whatever your preference. There are uh, some presets, there's audio, royalty-free music, sound effects, video footage, royalty-free, and images, graphics, etc. But what I'm going to show you is DaVinci Resolve, because that is my go-to editor. And here is DaVinci Resolve, some templates, and you can choose down the side here what you want. But I'm just going to type in here, um, templates. Uh, there we go. My typing's a bit slow this morning. And here they are. They all uh, come up. And here are all the various templates so on. But I just want to uh, make this a bit more narrow on the search and I know what I want. Uh, there are loads here for you to look through, but I just want what's called split screen um, or split. So I've typed in split there, and there are lots of templates here, split screens, etc., scalable multi-frames, um, transitions, etc., etc. But the one that um, I would like to use, I'm going to be showing you how to use today, is multi-screen frames pack. Okay, um, there it is. So I just want to download this. I've already downloaded it, but just for the sake of this video showing you, you just click on the download button. It downloads, um, and then I extract it and then load DaVinci Resolve. Uh, DaVinci Resolve comes in a paid version, which I use, but there is a free version, which does a huge amount for you. And you can just import your projects that you've downloaded once they're extracted into DaVinci Resolve. I put mine, all my templates in. Oh, no, first of all, yeah, I use the cloud version. So all of my stuff is on the cloud, but you've also got local, etc., as well, or network as well and you can uh, list and import your projects so there it is import projects etc a project libraries um, and i'm using the cloud so i uh, click on the templates here and basically go down and here are all my templates from motion array which i use so and it's really useful really powerful and so basically i load my uh, template that I'm going to show you how to use. I'm going to show you how to use a couple of templates. And first of all, they're very easy to use. So this is a split screen. So first of all, <coughs> excuse me, you click on your um, edit here. And here are the frames. So these are the ones I used earlier. Um, but basically what you do is you go down and it's, this is two screen. you got three screen, but here are the finished ones. So if I double click on this, then you can see this is one. This is two frame split, which I've done earlier, as I say. Um, and they're loading down the bottom there. And um, you can actually click up here. You've got the timeline frame or your footage loads in the other side as well. So between timeline and footage. Um, so basically down here. I'm just going to show you all of my footage I've previously imported into this template that I'm going to be using. This is a footage I've been using on a fishing bank, shot on my smartphone, just three short pieces here of three different views. And I deliberately shot these to show you this editing process. So here we are. Uh, in three frames. So I'm going to use three frames, got three shots of video, and these are quite good. Um, and these are the finished um, splits. And you can see here by what I'm clicking on here, double click on them. They're playing in the right hand in the actual timeline. So these are timelines, what's called a timeline DaVinci Resolve. But the one I want is uh, the one, number one, three frame split number one. And then the way of editing it, click on the three frames up here. And then I have here all of the images. That's the first image, which I'm, or video, it's image or video. Um, and then I go down to my library down here of imported stuff into this and put it down here. This is the first set of footage um, shot on the smartphone. Um, but 
when you move it across like this, you get both the audio and the image. What you can do is click on it, right click, link clips to unlink them, and then take it away. Click on the audio and it goes away. So, but um, here's the second clip here. Gonna double click it here. Uh, but you can click here and bring it in by just the audio or the um, video. And then I'm just going to shorten this to the same length because you need all your video uh, footage, same length, or images, the same length. Then double click here. Going to bring uh, this one in as well. I'm bringing them into exactly the same time frame at the moment, timeline. And then I'm just going to cut one out, put it in frame two, uh, and then delete the existing one, move it down. Uh, then I'm going to go back, Control X, Command X on that, and into the third one, bring it in there, get rid of the original, which was for a client. And now I have all three. And if I go to here, select it here, frame one of screen three, there we are. I've now got them all in my timeline split along. Let's just have a quick look and you can see they all come in there. So I'm going to go back up to the frames um, here, uh, split three, frame one. And there is a frame there, the video, first video that I've put into the multi frame uh, playing there. Now, one of the most important here is if you haven't got a gimbal and so on, although I showed you how to study it, is this stabilize function here. You'll have to play around with it as to how it works. Um, but basically, I've put that in there. And that, uh, when I've pressed stabilize, um, it will stabilize the footage accordingly. Okay. And then we go on to frame two. And we're going to do exactly the same thing here. It's going along and there's a footage there. And again, I'm going to just click there, there and click stabilize. And there are three options stabilize and then that stabilizes the footage. I mainly used similarity than the other two. And there we go. And that is smartphone footage, more stable, etc. It falls off there, but we're going to deal with that in a minute. Okay. Now we'll go to the, um, oh yeah, so what I'm doing there is shortening the frame. Uh, and I'm going to shorten this frame to the same length to cut out the fall off and so on and so forth. Okay, that's frame two, frame one. There we are, and this is going to cut the fall off of this footage as well at the end. There we go. Um, and there we go. That's good. Now go to frame three. Notice there, I haven't gone up to the top to go to the frame. They do come up above on the timeline. Shorten that to the same length, front and back, top and tail. It's slightly short there. There we go. There we are. And I'm going to show you another feature of stabilize here. Um, uh, camera lock. And that just zooms in. It locks it on the uh, best point for the footage, but it does zoom in. But it really does stabilize it. And go back to the three, and we've got them there. And that is pretty good. You know, but there's still a bit more work to do. So we click on the uh, color circles, uh, color edit and just show you this lots of things here this one here the triangles is just sharpening it you can use that to sharpen the circle wheels there which do a huge amount but let's just move a couple here move saturation uh, we're going to play around with the highlights going to play around with the shadows there and there is a huge amount that you can do here i'll do other tutorials on it um and then here is the second footage Again, go into the color editing. Doesn't need much sharpening, if anything, really, to be honest. But give it a bit. 
Um, and then we're going to adjust the, uh, oh, move along the timeline. Let's do that. So I'll see middle. There we are. Just change the saturation. The other one, I'll reduce this as I've increased down with the highlights and then adjust the shadows accordingly. That's, that's pretty good. Okay. And then number three, uh, click on the color circle again. And there we go. And here it is. Move it along. Sharpen it slightly. This was slightly more out of focus because I've zoomed in. So let's move that. That doesn't look too bad, though. That's not too bad. Just do some adjustments there back to it. Look at the three in unison, as it were. And look, there we go. And I've got the three working on multi screen using a multi screen, sorry, using a template from motion array. Then I click on the render button. I want to export this effectively. It's called render. Um, I'm going to put it in a folder. This is a client folder, but you choose your folder. You create folders, obviously normal way, Mac or PC. Um, I'm going to give it a name here, YouTube, there one, whatever. Um, and then just click add to render. Oh, there are other settings you can choose here as well, but add to render. Uh, and then let's render it out. Depending on the length of the footage and what's in it depends uh, how uh, long that process takes, but it is pretty quick. So now I've now gone up to my client, loaded that up in the project manager. And um, basically, uh, this is another template. Sorry, it isn't a loading project manager. It's another template from Motion Array. This is called Typography Kit, but I used it to compile a video. So you can see here that I've created all these split screens for a client, and they're focusing on eco-friendly and them being eco-friendly, et cetera, et cetera. And so what I've done, though, is I've imported those split screens, and here's the one that I've just done with my three um, uh, smartphone clip, almost said iPhone, I use, um, but there it is, uh, I use Android now. And so what I'm now going to do is go back up here. I'm gonna create a new timeline. And on the timeline, you can use project settings. Again, I haven't got time to go into all of that. There are lots of project settings you can set. Uh, you could default them, or you can actually unclick that and go in here and change them all if you want. So got a new timeline, it's blank. Let's give it a name so we know where we're going with it. Okay, and that is my new timeline. Go back to the existing one. So say you've done an existing client. There's the opening. I want to use that. Control X, Command, whatever on a Mac. I forget these. Um, Command C, isn't it? And then uh, Control V, Command V, uh, I think it is. And then basically my animated logo, which I've previously created using something called videos. But I'll show you that another time as well. I'm all for not reinventing the wheel. I've tidied it up, closed some of the other timelines. There's a logo that I've created for a client in the past. And there we go. And that's my intro that I use for this client. I'm now going to import in the multi screens without the audio. Don't need the audio. And uh, it goes straight to that. But what I don't like is this moving in on the uh, template motion ray template so let's zoom in a bit um and let's just go about there raise blade let's cut it back onto the arrow delete that and then move that back up there okay and um we should have um got rid of yeah it's probably got rid of most of that now of the uh, thing moving in, okay. 
Yeah, not bad, not bad, not bad. Okay, then I'm going to right click on both of them and then I'm going to put a, a um, fade between them. Several ways of doing this, but it, with two clips, just put in the fade there and it's a graduated. Ah, now what that sometimes does, it actually goes to a previous frame. There you see the motion ray template is still moving in slightly. So let's delete um, that. Um, and then uh, cut it. And then let's put it back on the uh, graduation between the clips. There we go. Okay, so that is pretty good. So then I'm going to take the beginning, uh, copy it, uh, control V uh, to paste it in, put in another fade, uh, trim the clips slightly different. Uh, frame rates, etc., to accommodate that. And then we are in there, and then we've got a beginning and an end. Obviously, all video for your client, whatever, or your own footage will be longer. But what I want to do now is use this template because I've created a timeline in this template, and these are typography templates. Um, you can see one side is my um, clip that I've loaded before, but here are some nice uh, typography templates again from Motion Array. Array, sorry. I'm going to copy that one for the sake of this video. I'm going to go to make sure you choose the right timeline, the one I've just created. Uh, paste in that typography. Click on it. You can change text and so on the side, but I'm just going to change the color. And that's a bit day low for me. So you can actually choose a screen color, just choose screen color, move around the screen. And then, so if you've got a logo or something, you can actually choose a color of a logo, and put it in there in the background. What I'm changing is the background below, beneath that, um, you cannot have one text. That'll do. Then I'm going to do the same uh, for the, you can obviously put in your own, um, settings here rgb settings etc um and just choose another one i'm being a bit too fussy here that'll do that'll do for you to get the idea so now we've got that above the top you can type in whatever text you want etc it comes in you know eco-friendly thing if you do not think about the future you cannot have whatever and there it goes and then what we do is we then do another render on this thank you very much for watching keep on watching cheers bye, bye.